What's up guys and welcome to the Double Chain News, it's Dan. It's E. All right, we got a really interesting list for you guys today. It's all about culture shock. So Maybe. some of the most, um, I guess, sh some, of, some of the most culture shock things you might run into if you go to these countries. Different countries, yeah. And you and I, we probably ran into some of these before. So let's dive into it. So this list is actually pub published on like a Dubai travel. It's a Fly to Dubai, uh, that's a website. Right. And uh, it is an infographic that I is love, made by them. I love infographics, because a while back we did an, uh, a thing on infographics of uh, words in other languages that have no translation in mm -hmm. English. I love stuff like that. Anyways, let's dip right into it. The first one, and I can tell you, the first one, everyone gets confused when they come to America, and it is the tipping culture in America. Oh okay? my gosh. Let me explain something to you guys. And I, I'm i not for the tipping culture in America. Mm. And here's why, I'm, I don't mind giving tips. In fact, let me, let me break, let me kinda disillusion you guys real quick. A lot of people complain that foreigners don't tip. You hear this all the time. Oh, well, I've worked on the restaurant industry and the stereotype was like Asians don't tip, Europeans definitely don't tip. Um, but here's the thing, it's not that they don't tip, it's that they don't mind tipping, okay? Because we heard this from our family. They don't mind tipping. They just want to, when you get the bill, they just want to see everything included. They don't they want don't, hidden charges. And they don't want to calculate it themselves. Exactly. Like they don't know how much to leave. They don't mind leaving 15, 20, as long as, well, everyone minds leaving a lot, but I'm just saying like, they don't want to all of a sudden be like, that's the bill, and then they have to do a calculation and then and like, figure out figure if it's it appropriate out. or not. Yeah. Because what they want to see is okay. Say like the standard is fifteen. Let's just say it's eighteen right. percent standard. Okay. Right. Even though it's fifteen technically. Technically. But if but you tack on the eighteen percent for them and just say this is just mandatory. Right. And then you calculate it and then that's it shows up in the final cost. The bottom line. Everyone will be okay with it when as right. a, as a tourist. Because in France, we're to my uncle has a restaurant in France. It's it's actually right underneath the Eiffel Tower. It's a Chinese restaurant, right? I still don't know the name of it, but anyways, you know, you get the bill, tip is on there, tax is on there, and he says basically everything is on there. That's the bottom line price. And if you feel like leaving a, a little more, one, two euros, you leave it. But then sometimes if in the in the past, like they'll come here and they'll leave a dollar or two for tip, thinking- That that's what's appropriate. That that's what's appropriate because the tip is in there. And then of course you have waiters and waitresses in America being like, you stiffed me running after, they gave me a dollar. Well, they didn't know, okay, because it's culture shock and not only at restaurants, people are so shocked. My cousin who you just met from Australia, she literally, the first time she came to America, she's like, Dan, I didn't realize you had to tip the cab driver, that a guy that opens your door, you're everybody, you literally- Bellman, they, everybody. Everybody, now, nowadays it's crazy. You go to the supermarket, there's a tip jar for your butcher, there's a tip jar for baristas, there's a tip jar at, you know, at, it's everywhere, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, and I think that Americans sometimes even gra have trouble grappling with this because, right. because every year I have to go online and I'll be like, what is the appropriate amount to tip everybody from anyone from, you know, your uh, hairstylist at your salon, your doorman if you have, one waitress and at the hotel all the staff at the hotel how much to tip them and you know your valet driver <laughs> went tip before or after how much you're just like ah. this, this is why I, I, I hate it in America where and this is where I don't hate tipping okay if somebody gives me good service I will gladly tip I hate how basically corporations take advantage of this people this is what people don't realize the waiter and waitress in America, when I was a waiter at the age of 18 in Boston, my wage was $2.35 legally. $2.35 per hour legally. So of course, my living was made only based on tips. That is actually the truth, okay? But that is wrong. And nowadays, a lot of times you see restaurants, they actually did do away with that system where they're like, I'm gonna pay them a normal wage, a good wage, and you don't have to tip. That's what I agree with. And now in America, it's become like, businesses take advantage of They'll that. They'll put the, some some restaurants, and I've been to, we've been to this restaurant in New York where they yeah. just put the service charge into the food price. Right. And everything comes down, you don't have to tip. Exactly. And I feel like, you know, eventually maybe that's something that everyone can get down with. Yes. I don't know what the co cost and benefits of the system are, but I feel like it was really easy for me and I know that any visitors coming from different countries, yeah. they'll be able to deal with that better too. Exactly, so anyways guys, that is the number one, I would say, culture shock when they come to America from people from a lot of places, they're just like, wow, wow, tipping everywhere, especially you go to New York City, oh my gosh. And they don't wanna be inappropriate. Right. Exactly. What people don't realize is people, it's not that tourists don't wanna tip, right. it's just that they're so confused. So like, it is confusing, we're even confused. Totally confused. We're so confused. Anyways, let's move on to the second one. So if you go to South Africa, 
If you, if you visit a tribe or township, you are often offered a cultural or locally grown delicacy as a mm. form of greeting and, and respect. And if you don't eat it, it can be a sign of disrespect. But what if I told you they offered you organs or insects? Organs well, of animals or insects. I, I, and you don't eat it. I don't mind eating innards if the case sure. comes down to it. Insects are a little bit more weird for me, yeah. but hey, when we get there, I mean, when somebody gives me anything and I don't know them that well, yeah. I have the tendency to just eat it. Right. So to if, be it was, polite. if it was like a giant beetle or a spider, well, or a, you would eat that. Well, if the locals eat it, it must not be that bad. It's, but you're looking at it and you're like, and I've actually watched a program in which they kind of fry silkworms or something, yeah. which I feel really bad for silkworms because they produce our silk, but they're supposed to just taste normal. Like it's not okay. that big of a deal. Yeah, I would have a problem with that. I I, I know I, you would. I can't, I cannot stomach <laughs> that. Sorry for the pun, <laughs> I can't do it, I can't do it. Um, so sorry, I guess but I But then you be would be visiting. disrespecting the locals. I, yeah, I'm, I know, so I probably wouldn't visit a, a South African township. You know what's funny? I have a, yeah. several South African friends and none yeah. of them mentioned this to me at all. No, but they're saying a township or a village or a tribe. I mean, if you just go to South Africa, the, the city, city, I city, guess, I'm people... sure. Like if you go to Cape Town or wherever, I'm sure it's like not like that, right? Mm. Um, okay, so this, this is a kind of a confusing or interesting one, right? If you're in China, it said, or maybe other Asian countries, if you if you leave something on your, it's customary to leave something on your plate. Whereas in Western countries, we're taught to clean the plate. Just to eat all eat of everything. The, if off you your plate. like in Western uh, society, it's like if you eat everything off the plate, it means you enjoyed the meal. Right. But here on the infographic, it says in China specifically, if you leave something on your plate, that's more respectful right. because if you clear off your plate, it means you want more food, right. which can be seen as being disrespectful right. or it's signaling to the host that you want more food. But I've actually never experienced yeah. this at all. Yeah. I, at all. I can't remember somebody being like, damn, leave some food back on your plate because I eat everything. It's gone. In fact, when my Chinese kid. relatives yeah. made a point to tell me don't waste your food. Right. So, so, but, but I do, I have heard of that though. I mm. have heard of leaving something there, but this is a confusing one because even in America, different social economical classes, like in certain classes, I've heard like maybe upper class or whatever, like you might, if you're in like finishing school or something, they might say leave a little bit in there because you will eat again. You know, there's, there's different that rules. That is very and strange. I, I'm sorry. Like, look, if you look, don't waste food. That's my philosophy. Don't waste yeah. food. And hey, anyone out there who's also Chinese, yeah. like let us know if you've ever heard this before. Cause I never personally experienced right. it. I've also heard it, yeah. never experienced it. That's an interesting one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're saying in India, the next one is it's a bizarre train boarding method. Okay. I know that in, in India, in China, Hong Kong, wherever these large cities, Japan, when the morning commute comes, I mean, we thought we had a bad in New York. There are people literally their job is to just push you in the train. I've seen pictures that come at, came out of Japan of conductors who just, they're not conductors. There's people who are dressed like conductors, but their jobs are just to push you into the train. They're, they're people stuffers. Yeah. They're, they're, they're yeah, they're, 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 they're people pushers. Yeah. And they stuff you in the train and I'm sorry, I, that, that whole claustrophobic thing will, will like, I can't deal with that. But basically in India, not only do you, you're not only like, are you getting shoved in, but you actually have to like jostle. It sounds like they're, this is what they're saying. It says India's train boarding methods are incredibly different from any Western methods. Getting on the train involves furious fighting, shoving, scratching, and clawing to get in. But then once you're in the remainder of the train ride, basically you're like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I scratched you. I'm so sorry for the black eye. This is like, <laughs> Like you do anything possible to get on, and then once you're on, you're, it's, you're, like, you're like, oh, sorry, I ripped your clothes. And then you're like, oh, no problem. Sorry, I punched you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> what, is this true? Let us know, guys. I don't know, I mean, all true. of my Indian friends are Indian Americans, yeah. so I, I don't know. None of them have ever, ever spoken to me about this phenomena back home, so I don't know. Because I will be <laughs> peed if somebody ripped my shirt off and I'm trying to get on the plane or gave me a black eye. <laughs> I, I'd be like, yo, you're gonna pay for that? And then they're like, oh, sorry, sorry. And then I'd be like, well, that's it? Like, I, I, I'd be like very, very perplexed if but, this happens. You me. know, but maybe that's just the way it is. That, that, I was gonna say, that's the way it is. If that, let us know, guys, let us know. Uh, the next one, of course, um, if you go to China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, a lot of the e e Asian countries, e Southeast Asia, you get the toilet, okay? You're gonna, you're not gonna find a toilet. You're gonna find a hole in the ground. You have to squat. Oh, it's just a squatting toilet. If you, just, or a you squatting mean, Google toilet. one of those, oh, maybe or maybe not. Um, it's basically just a little, you know, a squat toilet. I don't know. I use or those a, a hole lot. in the ground. Nowadays, you find less holes in the ground. Right. Like you find more, like actual porcelain 
squatting Where toilets. Where you put your feet on you squat. the rim. You, you squat. squat. And that's how you... And, and also, when I was growing up, I do remember holes in the ground, and I never... To this day, I still don't... I have never taken a poo squatting. I have never. That is the strangest thing I have ever never, heard. because I'm terrified of it. When I was I'm terrified. When I was growing up in China, yeah. I used those toilets a lot, actually. I never. I literally, I'm terrified of it. I mean, I, I, the, the last time I was in China, about 16 years ago, I, I went, I had diarrhea and I had to, sorry for the, put your food oh, down. Oh, TMI. I, I had stomach issues, right? And I was in Shanghai, I was in the pavilion and I literally, literally went to 12 different bathrooms. Looking until, for a normal Looking for a normal one, because I'd, I'd open the door, whole, I just couldn't do it. I, mean, I don't know how, I could just, I'm not gonna risk my first time with, um, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna risk it, so I, I, I had know. to find a toilet. Here's the thing. I can see how tourists might have, if they've never seen a squatting toilet, yeah. they come to China or some of those other countries, they go and they open the door and they yeah. expect to see a, a, you know, a standing toilet, but see a squatting toilet. Yeah. And what? also, I know myself, my muscles don't, I've tried to squat, I can't squat. No, I cannot do it. I personally find it way more comfortable. I can't, my muscles don't work it's that way. It's also more sanitary. I, I understand, I'm terrified of- In my of, opinion. I'll tell you right now, I will fall, and I will land on, you know, I just, I can't do it. So yes, that is a major culture shock. Even for me, that was a culture shock. And I'm Chinese. Well, you grew up in America. I grew that's up in America, Whereas, that's true. Whereas, you know, that, those were the most common toilets in China for a long time. I was shocked because growing up, I just don't, I, I mean, even when I was, uh, I grew up in like a, a stone hut, like a, like a long tongue, like a stone concrete. Like when I was, I moved away when I was like five, right? I even when I was little, there's no toilets. I pooped in a in a in a spittoon in a spittoon. So even then, yeah, I had a bowl I... to sit on. I mean, that was normal. That was normal. Well, still. But still, just the hole in the ground completely perplexes me. So, um, okay, this one also I ran into when I was in France for the first time. When you greet somebody, you kiss kissing by greeting. Air kiss both cheeks. I still don't know how to do it. I do it wrong because I think I'm kissing their cheek. But I'm not. But in reality, you're not really kissing them. You're really just put pushing the sides of your faces and making kissing noises. But I wish there's a there's like a that. there's a tutorial. You there are plenty of tutorials on there's YouTube. There's a tutorial. I mean, like you are gonna look up a video like how to do the kiss greeting. No, no, I read in a list somewhere. Uh, okay. How to do it? Because all right, the first time I went to France, it was the year 2000. I went to visit my family, and of course, it's it's interesting. Like I'm I'm seeing my Chinese family for the first time in several years, and they're they're all Frenched out, you know. So when they meet me, they're like, oh, they have French names. So they're they go in for the left and the right, and I it's one of those where I'm like, are you, what's going on? Are you? Are you, trying to, are you trying to kiss me? What's going on? Like, I just, I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm like, can we just shake? Can we just shake? And of course, they all do it to each other. They're like, oh, oh, it's just know, natural. Jean-Pierre, Jean how are you? You know, yeah. like, oh, oh, goodbye, hello, strange, even, not strangers. You know, not strangers, you know, friends. Yeah, friends. Yeah. And you know, um, or, or even close acquaintances, right. I think. I think that Americans are pretty, you know, Americans are affectionate. We'll give somebody a hug to say hello. Right. But somehow, we don't know how to do that. I don't know how to, it, cause it's awkward. Like if you're gonna kiss, just kiss the cheek, like kiss lips to the cheek. Why, like th th it's the awkward when it's like kiss, kiss. <laughs> like that's what's the awkward part for me. And I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying like, I find that was it charming. I find yeah. it extremely charming. <laughs> it's just yeah. so weird. I still, I just No, no, it's perfect that. because you know, the French invented the perfume and yeah. when you oh, spritz, oh. Just the right amount of perfume, and you lean in for those two fake kisses. Right. You're supposed to swift it a little ah, bit. It's right. like you know. Right. So, anyways, that will be a culture shock, especially uh, especially if you don't know how to do it. Also, if you come to America, all your people will be shocked by how big the portions are. Yeah. Right. Especially, especially like pizzas. Or in Texas. Or in Texas, like <laughs> half of like literally a pig. Like here's a rack of lambs. Like I mean a rack of. No, all the Ritz. Texans out there, is it really that much bigger? It's huge. Everything? It, especially in America, like pizzas are, there's small, medium, large, extra large. I mean, pizzas are like this big. Mm -hmm. But if you go to Europe, like a lot of times they're, you know, for one. They're or, small. Yeah, they're Unless small. Unless they're in the personal. tourist areas. They'll give you like bigger yeah. portions in tourist areas. Yeah. But a lot of times people are kind of shocked by the portion sizes. Yeah. And let's not even talk about Japan. Well, let's talk about Japan because if you go to Japan and you're an American, you will be equally, if not more shocked that you order something and it's like You know, I'm, I'm born in Japan, I travel there quite often and every time I go, I cannot, I, I'm never full when I leave because I'm like, oh, I'll have number three, please. 
it's like it's like this big. it's like this big and 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 you'll see guys eating this much and as a girl you're just like wow now i feel really bad like because after this i want another one but wait so so let's say like because typical like if you go out for sushi here right typical sushi meal is like one person i can eat you know a roll comes with six sushis right mm-hmm. i could eat 12 i could eat three rolls what no but Guys, that's nothing, and that's not even a lot. That's just normal, like three rolls. So, so it's eighteen pieces of sushi. But those rolls are huge. No, 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 no. You're thinking of the huge ones. I'm oh, you're thinking regular re- rolls. Regular hey. rolls, right? And then I'll eat a soup and maybe something else, mm-hmm. and I'll be full. But mm-hmm. and so in Japan, like they what? They don't eat that many. Of course, I think they well, do, right? I think that it depends. Like mm-hmm. it depends on the situation. But I'll tell you, in every single situation, they will serve you less than okay. what you expect. Right. Um, growing up in America, if you go out to get some barbecue you get like a huge plate of meat or something right. like that. When you go to Japan, you get a barbecue, it comes out with like three pieces, yeah. like a couple pieces. But it also costs a lot too. It costs a lot because the meat is very good right. quality, but then that's for one person. Right. And you you just don't feel like you have enough. So I guess if you go to Canada, it's not uncommon to carry liquids such as milk in a bag, which to me, that's really weird. And even like when you go to Flushing, you see soup in a bag to go. And I'm like, that's weird, man. And I see these photos online where they say that in Mexico, they serve soda in a bag. Yeah. And, and soda in a bag. That's so pretty cool. In a lot of countries, they do put liquids in a bag. And I'm like, I do understand because maybe bags are more prevalent and they, and they don't want to spend the money on actual plastic containers because it costs more and it's bad for the environment, but so are bags. So I'm like, okay. Well, actually the bags a lot of times are made out of paper. So instead of plastic, well, I don't know about Canada, but I know in China, they'll package milk in uh, paper bags, like right. hard, like almost like cardboardy feeling mm-hmm. paper bags. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. very, very common, okay. very common. Okay. And I find it to be really, you know, convenient to use because, okay, you, this might sound strange, but back in the day when we had school snacks, they'll give us each one of those bag of milk, okay. a bag of milk, and they'll come with a straw, or you can just snip off the corner and drink it like that. Yeah, I mean, I do see the appeal, but it's like, a, it just, it's unsanitary feeling. It's not unsanitary. I, I feel like it's, Maybe. I mean, anyways, I mean Use a cup. Uh, so another one is you will definitely get a culture shock if you go to other countries and and um, basically there's people like there's no traffic signs, no traffic laws, and, pe- and people are just jaywalking and you have to dodge the people. And one thing that I've heard a lot is when people come to America, they're like they're they're, they're amazed by how orderly the traffic is. What? Really? Yes, I've heard that. Yeah, because apparently in a lot of other countries. There's just people will just walk in the street and you're like, because in America, you can't do that. You'll get arrested for jaywalking. That's an offense. So you mm-hmm. have to cross. And even like when they're, I mean, people do it, but you know, you get honked at and it's frowned upon and it's dangerous. But in other countries, um, it's basically, that's what, that's what well, people a lot do. Of, a lot of people, when they come to America, they'll, they'll say it's kind of shocking to them how how much the police regulate traffic. A lot of people have good things to say about that because it makes the pedestrians feel more right. safe. It's just more regulated in general, right. but of course. Also makes you know. them tons of money because they write 50,000 tickets a day, but anyway. Says the person who gets pulled over and parking tickets a lot. Map, map. Oh, so if you go to say Greece or other some other countries, you have, there is a sign where if you go to the toilet, if you go to the bathroom, you cannot throw the toilet paper inside of the toilet because it'll clog the system. Uh huh. You have to throw it in a bin and that freaks a lot of people out. That freaks a lot of people with, who are used to having very strong toilets out. And I, I'm talking about- Muslim, Americans. Americans. Yeah. Because they're like, people's waste right. is actually in the waste basket. Right. And let me tell you guys, let me tell you guys. Yo, I've been, people have been knocking on me since I was little. When I was little, again, I pooed in a spittoon. Why okay? is this video, each segment, we have to talk about some sort Listen, of defecation on your part. So when I got to America, I didn't realize that, that, first of all, I'd never seen a toilet. So I'm like, oh cool, it flushes. So I don't know that you have to throw toilet paper into the toilet bowl. I didn't know that. Oh. So I would go to my friend's house. Yep, my friends know. I don't know, just chuck it right in the wastebasket. In my oh, own house, wow. chuck it right in the wastebasket because I'm like, I guess it can go in either. And I literally got like chastised for that. <laughs> and my friends were like, you can't do that. I'm like, well, I don't know. Like, it, well, you know, now, what if I have weak toilets? I don't know. When, now, now I don't do that. No, but. when you, when sometimes even when you go to restaurants now and they have a weak pub plumbing system, they'll, they'll tell you to put the, uh, the, the toilet paper into the trash can. And a lot of people will be like, well, that is really gross. Right. But apparently I mean, it it's is. very normal yeah. in other countries. I so. mean, it's gross, but it's in a trash can. It's not gonna crawl out. 
No, but it and might touch you. I mean, what? I mean, it's no, in the trash but can. It might cause some. Oh yeah, I mean, there's odors. Yeah, I get it. I yeah, get it. But I mean, I like, I just personally, because I, I mean, I grew up throwing toilet paper in the wastebasket, also in the, in the thing. So I'm like, oh, okay. this video needs a disclaimer about the amount of poo it has in it. Right. That's right. I mean, I do get it in public places. Of course, if everybody starts putting it in there, then it's like, oh my gosh, that thing fills up fast. So you better, you know, I hope they have good cleanup services, so. Mm -hmm. All right guys, so those are some of our favorites from those list. There's a few more, we'll put the link below. Mm -hmm. You guys can take a look at it. Now, let us know what we might be shocked at if we came to your country, and let us know when you came to America, if you're not from America, what was the biggest cultural shock in America? Or what you have seen in another country that you were traveling to. That's right. Thanks again for watching. Bye. Bye.